April 20th is the fateful day that Elon Musk made the world go crazy as SpaceX attempted the first orbital Starship flight into space. That marks a big step forward as Starship has truly become the most powerful rocket in the world. Accordingly, Starship has completed many functions but also suffered significant damage. This raises more questions about SpaceX's success. Is the damage that Starship has caused to Stage Zero's infrastructure and to the surrounding natural ecosystem more severe than they had thought? With a mighty roar, the first ever integrated Starship rocket soared towards space on April 20th from SpaceX's Seaside Starbase facility at Boca Chica Beach on the Gulf Coast of South Texas at 9.33 a.m. It was a majestic sight. The giant monster was slowly leaving its nest, carrying a total of 39 Raptor engines and about 5,000 tons of fuel into the air. Starship slowly lifted off the pedestal, ascended, and set the first major milestone in its history, leaving the launch pad with the fully integrated Starship 24 paired with Booster 7. The rocket launch process continued but there were a few problems. Right from the start, the booster part of the rocket lost three of its Raptor engines. Just seconds later, the rocket had an anomaly with a small explosion along with a flash of light below the thrusters. One more engine was destroyed. Despite those adverse conditions, Starship still achieved the second achievement of surpassing Max-Q at T plus one minute 18 seconds which is also when the vehicle stress is at its highest. If that were the case, we can also see that there are six disabled engine holes that account for more than 15% of the active engines. But fortunately, Starship kept going. To explain this, we have a calculation. We have a total of 33 engines on the booster, and we removed at least 5 inoperable engines. Meanwhile, for the original engines, when starting up, it will only operate at 70% of their capacity. When one engine is turned off, the rest can adjust the thrust accordingly, which can increase the power of some engines, or decrease the engine power on the opposite side, avoiding the phenomenon of asymmetric thrust between the engines. Each engine has a maximum thrust of 2,300 kilonewtons. This gives the total thrust of the 33 engines at 75 million newtons. That's twice the thrust of the previously launched Saturn V at 34 million and 500,000 newtons. We know that the specific impulse of the Raptor at sea level is 330 specific impulses. To calculate mass fuel flow, we can use this formula. F thrust equals exhaust velocity VE times M dot, or mass fuel flow. We know the thrust and we can calculate the exhaust velocity by multiplying the specific impulse by one flight acceleration. VE or velocity equals 330s times 9.18 meters per second squared, which equals 3.237 meters per second. We can now calculate the mass fuel flow. Mass fuel flow equals thrust divided by velocity, which is 75,900,000 times 70% over 3.237 which equals 16,413 kilograms per second. We can conclude that Starship must consume more than 16 tons of fuel per second when launched. So, as it goes up over time, it will get lighter and lighter, and the rest of the engines will be adjusted to keep the rocket in a thrust-to-weight ratio, and not endanger the vehicle's structure. A common thrust-to-weight ratio is 1.2 to 1.5 at launch. This ratio means that the rocket has an acceleration of 1.5 g compared to its normal acceleration of 1. Starship has a launch mass of about 5,000 tons, making it weigh 49 million and 50,000 newtons. If Starship loses 6 engines and has 27 remaining, for the booster that is, its thrust can still reach the ratio of 1.26 g, or 27 times 2,300 over 49 million and 50,000 newtons when the other engines are at full capacity.
That's how the engineers at SpaceX designed it if something were to happen to some of the engines. Then it will still ensure that the Starship stays intact and flies. Starship's next target is a separation between Booster and Starship, but it probably won't happen at this point. After performing a spectacular somersault, the Starship lost its direction and fell. Starship is almost 400 feet or 120 meters tall and weighs 11 million pounds or 4.9 million kilograms. An out-of-control rocket full of highly flammable fuel is a very dangerous object, so to prevent any harm, SpaceX engineers triggered the self-destruct mechanism and blew up the entire rocket over the Gulf of Mexico. The sounds of the explosion echoed across the sky, and the first journey of Starship officially concluded with the cheers and applause of all SpaceX employees present at the headquarters. We can see how happy and proud they are when shortly after the launch, Musk tweeted his praise for the SpaceX team. Congrats, SpaceX team, on an exciting test launch of Starship. Learned a lot for the next test launch in a few months. Congratulations to the entire SpaceX team on an exciting first integrated flight test of Starship, SpaceX's homepage tweeted. Even though everything was blown away, this is definitely not a disaster. Despite the loss of engines and the separation procedure failing, the system ended the flight successfully and Starship ended its mission in a safe way. As for SpaceX, they don't see detonating Starship as a failure or an ideal option, it can be said that they consider it an aspect of their rocket research and testing process. Heavy boosters like Starship are inherently more complex and difficult to develop than smaller rockets, just as building an aircraft carrier takes more work than a modest yacht. In addition, with the goal of making all the spacecraft's components reusable and capable of relaunching a few hours after landing, SpaceX is taking on a technical challenge far beyond what has already been achieved in the previous 60 years of the space age. Therefore, the lessons learned by the company from the test launch are a great opportunity for the future of Starship. Remember, the company's philosophy is to fail fast, find problems, and fix them with the next rockets. Immediately after the end of the launch, the company said, with a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and we learned a tremendous amount about the vehicle and ground systems today that will help us improve on future flights of Starship. They performed the launch as a way to collect data rather than an actual test session. This was a development test. This was the first test flight of Starship, said Innsbrucker, Principal Integration Engineer at SpaceX. The goal was to gather the data, as we said, clear the pad, and get ready to go again. So, the first Starship Integrator launch is said to be a success for the entire company of SpaceX as well as its founder, Elon Musk. And looking at SpaceX now, they've built up to Ship 30. Based on how quickly they've built the Starship and Raptor engines, from there we can expect that the preparation for the next launches will not be far away. In addition to the valuable data obtained to improve for the next test launches, SpaceX still has consequences that need to be handled and to have a solution. The first problem involves the OLM, but before that, with Elon Musk's wishes to a minimum, I'd like to set expectations low, and if we get far away from the launch pad before something goes wrong, I think I would consider that a success. Just don't blow up the launch pad. They wanted to see the rocket take off and not cause too much damage to the launch site. Although Starship did not completely destroy the launch pad, it did have damage that took a long time to repair. Footage obtained shows some damage at the launch site, such as a giant crater forming just below the orbital launch mount. All the cement pieces were flipped from the surface of the Earth. The explosive power of 30 Raptors, generating 15 million pounds of thrust, broke everything under its feet. It may have also been the reason why some Raptor engines failed due to the high-speed concrete hitting them. Besides that, the fuel farm is also significantly affected. In fact, the debris that was fired from the road surface under the OLM upon ignition of the booster's Raptor 2 engines damaged some of the orbital tank farm's tanks. 
Not only that, longtime Boca Chica resident and SpaceX's launch documentarian Luis Balderas was filming the test flight from about 10 kilometers from the pad. The rocket's liftoff, he said, felt like an earthquake. That thing rocked my gut, Balderas said. The whole place was shaking. I felt my stomach inside me shaking. It was insane. The launch spewed chunks of concrete, smaller pieces of equipment, and general trash in the immediate vicinity, he said, though the debris didn't reach the area where he and his crew were stationed. One of his vehicles, however, wasn't so lucky. Three of its windows were blown out by the force of the launch. Another vehicle belonging to a YouTube streamer that was parked next to Baudadas' SUV was hit by chunks of concrete the size of bowling balls. The explosion also affected the surrounding ecosystem. Getting reports from multiple people now of particulates raining down in areas of Port Isabel after the nearby explosion of the SpaceX rocket stack Starship slash Super Heavy, NPR reporter Pablo De La Rosa tweeted. In addition, the explosion also affected migratory birds, causing them to fly wildly. The American Bird Conservancy warned last summer that SpaceX's continued efforts in the area to develop its Starship will continue to harm endangered birds. This will make it difficult for SpaceX for future launches when it comes to accusations of damaging the natural environment. In short, after more than a year, the Starship is finally getting into space in a pretty good way, even if it hasn't fulfilled its full potential. There are successes and lessons to be learned, but there are also damages that need to be handled and perfected by SpaceX. Hopefully, in the future, Starship will develop better and promise a more perfect launch. And that concludes today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't, and ring the bell so you won't miss out on new SpaceX fans content. Once again, thank you so much, see you next time.